You know, the continent isn't lacking human and even natural resources as highlighted yesterday when we had that fantastic conversation, especially when we were with, uh, I think, uh, uh, engineer, uh, you know, Walter, he did say that the continent has an abundance, abundance of human and, you know, natural resources. But the thing is, how well can the continent harness these potentials is a thing that is lacking and missing. And that is why the conversation is continuing here today on The Square. Welcome. If you missed out, now is the time to join BSA and Suleiman. The world is advancing at a great pace and the continent is fighting hard not to be left behind in the progress uh, where the government hasn't stepped up to their responsibilities. Individuals and groups, as highlighted on the show yesterday, have taken the baton and are running their race. So the development indicators are abundant, but not many have been seen in Africa. Technological advancement, intelligence gathering, harnessing natural resources to benefit Africans education are all products of a progressive environment and they not ever present in Africa. The governments uh, on the continent have spent ridiculously low amounts on protecting their governments and in an age of cyber threat, most nations are on the edge. In June of 2020, an Egyptian cyberware group attempted to hack into the cyberspace of the Ethiopian government as they aimed to cause economic and political pressure in Ethiopia. They were unhappy over the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. Unlike Ethiopia, many African countries have been hacked into. Just recently, various government agencies were hacked by a group named Anonymous. It is an age of upward trends in technology and African nations can't be left behind. Every government agency must employ the best talents to protect and secure their countries. It's an investment that is capable of providing good jobs for many African youth, but in many countries, this sadly has been absent. Another threat against the African continent is cyber espionage. Key information about nations being spied on and taken to foreign powers who in turn use information to their advantage. Neocolonialism, that's it. But it is the utmost responsibility of African governments to secure the digital future of their citizens by providing cybersecurity for key individual and governmental structures. And that is why we are looking at developing the continent. To unpack this today, uh, again, we have uh, Kayode Olu Kayode Walter Oluwale, who is a cyber information analyst uh, and a CEO of uh, Cyber Hygiene uh, uh, AI. And of course, Collins uh, Wake, a global affairs analyst. Gentlemen, good to have you both on uh, VSA. Let me. Good, aft good afternoon or uh, good evening. Yeah, well, no, it's okay. We already appreciate the time difference. Uh, by the way, uh, both uh, gentlemen, uh, Collins is joining us from Germany, and of course, uh, Walter is joining us uh, from the United States. And uh, this is Lagos, Nigeria, ninth time here. Let me start with you, Kayade. Kindly take us through Africa's current place in cyber security relative to what's available in the advanced nations of the world. Thank you very much for throwing that question to me. Uh, in the world of cyber, there's nothing like Africa, there's nothing like uh, advanced country. It's a level playing, for, playing field. Uh, I'm very much uh, in, inside the cyber world. Uh, what my company does is go into the dark web and get information that is in the dark web in a very good, uh, good way so that our clients will know exactly what, what kind of information is out there about them. Now, you have to understand that cyber is a different space. It's not a surface space. It's a totally different space. And you need a whole set of tools and a skill set to be able to enter the cyber space. For you to be able to enter the cyber space, it's not about the level of education you have. It's about the level of skills that you have. Uh, in Nigeria today, 
we have, when you look at the top 50 AI developers that are women in the world, there's a Nigerian young woman in there, one of my mentees in there. So we have the skills in Nigeria, but Nigeria doesn't really tap into that space. Nigeria doesn't know how to tap into that space. When you look at the universities in Nigeria, there is no university out there in Nigeria that, that I'm aware of today that's really taking advantage of what's going on in security or cyber. Security is a, is a space that we don't take seriously, maybe because we don't understand it. Uh, when you want to talk about the security infrastructure of Nigeria specifically, most of the security is in the hands of foreign entity. When you look at the cyber people that are taking care of the cyber security of Nigeria, they're not Nigerians, they're foreigners. Ma managing cybersecurity for Nigeria. So what kind of security do you have in there? And I'm talking about this from the point of, not from the point of view that I'm from America, or I'm a Nigerian, I'm, point, I'm talking from the point of view that I know what I'm talking about. So I've been in Nigeria without being in Nigeria, working with Nigeria without being physically in Nigeria and understanding exactly what's been going on for the past 10 years. So I can tell you different scenarios of what has happened, but Nigeria does not take cybersecurity seriously. Let me give you a very good example. When you look at the leaders right now, most of them are using Yahoo email account. You're supposed to have your domain name, .gov.ng, secured. They don't have that. They don't believe in that. So in essence, you are designing a framework to allow a manager or somebody to be able to scam the system in the country. So when we don't have a policy that says we have zero tolerance for, you know, uh, breach or data breach, then it becomes apparent that, you know, it becomes a wild, wild west. You can do anything in Nigeria and no one really cares about cybersecurity. The rest of the world is serious about cybersecurity. The rest of the developers is, uh, uh, is serious about cybersecurity. So what can we do to understand that there's a need for us to be focused on cybersecurity and get jobs for Nigerians that can do cybersecurity. They have the skills. Right now, artificial intelligence, there's about 500,000 jobs deficit. If you go to amazon.com slash jobs today, you have 1,800 job openings in AI alone. And you don't have to be in the US to apply for that job. In two years, there's going to be over 2 million job openings. Where are Nigerians in this picture? Hmm. You know, uh, this, uh, the, I think pertinent questions you've raised uh, here, we'll come back uh, to stretch it further, but let me quickly uh, run up to Collins. Uh, Collins, uh, good to see you again on the show. Uh, do you think Africans have enough digital protection, listening to Walter, and what should nations be doing at this point in time? Uh, thank you, Sly, for having me. Uh, nice to be here with you again. Uh, well. Um, uh, Canada has uh, given us a paintbrush of um, the enormous um, challenge that um, you know Africa is facing as far as uh, you know cyber security is uh, concerned. I mean, just to bring it um, a little bit uh, home in terms of um, the paradox that uh, Africa's development is uh, facing, uh, we are looking at a continent with. Um, uh, uh, 12% share of um, the uh, you know, global population, out of which, you know, just a mere 1% uh, of uh, global GDP, uh, you know, is resident in Africa, and just 2% of uh, world trade emanates from, uh, from Africa. Now, despite all of this, uh, it is also on record that 6% of the fastest growing uh, 10 economies of the world are actually positioned uh, in Africa. So you see, we're dealing with um, a paradox that paints a picture of doom and gloom, yet Africa then becomes that bride that everyone uh, courts. So there are the challenges that actually drive investors away, or at least makes uh, you know, investment decisions uh, very, very difficult to take uh, very quickly. But on the other hand, there are quite a number of, um, you know, very alluring uh, pool factors that want to get, uh, Afri uh, you know, investors right in Africa because the potentials are huge and the return on investment, you know, are there. So you see, uh, Africa will continue to attract 
you know, these uh, investors. But it is doubtful for how long, you know, they will continue to find Africa, um, you know, uh, interesting, in lucrative uh, business destination as long as, um, you know, infrastructure remains uh, a huge problem. And more specifically, you know, cyber infrastructure, I mean, not to talk of uh, road network connectivity and so on and so forth. So, yes, um, uh, there are quite a lot to do. And if I have, um, you know, the uh, uh, leeway, in a, a little while, I, I will be talking about, you know, the entire financial package that is needed over a period of, uh, of 10 years, you know, a decade, to actually get Africa crawling out of, um, you know, the huge infrastructure uh, difficulties that they have at this moment. Well, anyway, Collins, keep in mind, that's why we're here. You will have that time uh, to uh, space it more on uh, some of those uh, things that can actually leapfrog the continent, uh, you know, forward. Now, I come back to you, uh, uh, you know, Coyote. Uh, the thing here is uh, some people are talking about cyber crime. And uh, the question is, uh, looking at the dark, dark web, uh, how can cyber crime uh, be reduced as it has become a critical problem in most African countries and it is affecting Africa's image on the international front for some ethical uh, you know experts like yourself uh, how best can you take out the bad guys uh, painting uh, the continent uh, you know in a very bad light oh thank you very much for that question um, I'm gonna dumb it down I make it very simple. My background is cybersecurity. I started as mechanical engineering. I started my company, uh, educated myself, and got in and got my hands dirty, created cyberhygiene.ai. Uh, yeah. What we do is based on what our clients want, and we give them results. It's not about how many degrees I have. It's not about what kind of association I have. It's not about how fancy the name is do you have any kind of data that is potentially damaging to our company in the dark web that's what we do now let's go back to nigeria i personally from my own experience for over 10 years in nigeria going back and forth doing business in nigeria and uh, doing business in america i don't see a need for nigeria to look for any foreign investment why do I say that? Nigeria has everything that's in there for Nigeria to use. The resources are there, the brain power you know, is right there. I'll, I'll, I'll give an example of why we need to start changing our narratives and our thinking. Before I say that, you understand what an alcoholic is. It's really hard for an alcoholic to admit that he or she has a drinking problem. Nigeria has a religious leak problem. We have a Nigerian leak problem. You have every single leak problem under the sun. So the first thing is we have to admit to ourselves, we do have a problem. And how do we collectively work together? Not as it, this tribe, not that tribe, not that gender, not work together. The example I want to cite, which I want to give you right now, is that gentleman that was arrested for being an expert in robbing banks in that country. <laughs> he doesn't have any form of quote unquote education, he doesn't have any first degree in uh, computer science, yet he can breach every single banking system in Nigeria. Now you're gonna take that kid that taught himself how to write code and be successful about writing code and take that kid and lock him up in jail. And anybody with a modicum of intellect will understand that when you lock that kid up in jail, what is going to happen is he's going to be the professor of how to break, break any bank in Nigeria. He's going to educate more people in jail on how to break Nigerian system. He has figured out by himself, because he can think out of the box, how to break every single banking system in that country. Now, why don't you think differently and hire him as part of the security system and call him a bug, I mean, a bug, a bug bounty? Yes, punish him. I don't agree with what he's doing, but he has that intelligence that he can help secure the infrastructure of the country. Okay. Now, 
he can teach the security uh, force, uh, forces in Nigeria how to secure the banks. The banks can listen to him and go back and go and start fixing the codes, which were designed by a whole lot of foreigners that doesn't understand the narratives in Nigeria. When you design something, you have to localize it because the local na narrative works to break everything. Uh, when you look at the uh, canines, uh, canine industry in the US, when you look at the number one, number two, best scent logics, uh, uh, scent designers in the world. I'm saying the number one, number two, scent designers in the world to sniff out any kind of drug. That person has to be a Nigerian. We went to the same high school, we went in the same dormitory together, and he can go into just about any airport and pass, what do you call it, any kind of contraband. True, because he understands how scents work. He owns scent logics, okay? So the point is this. We have people that are intelligent and you're locking them up. You have people that are intelligent, you're shooting them on the streets where they say they need jobs. 33% of Nigerians are unemployed. Get them the infrastructure so that they can employ themselves and create business for themselves. You don't need any foreign investment to come in. You don't need to depend on anybody. We have everything. We have cocoa. We have uh, coconut. Look, coconut. What is coconut uh, waste used for in this world? When you take the coconut shell, the one that we throw out, in, you know, throw out. If you grind it up, heat it up to 800 degrees Fahrenheit, it becomes what? Activate, activate the carbon. They use it in water filter, use it in hospitals. And we have everything. What is wrong with us? We have to understand that we have to stop thinking that we don't have a problem. We have to accept that fact and start looking at all the problems independent of religion, independent of tribe, independent of gender, independent of you know the mental health we have, don't you know who I am syndrome? Mm -hmm. Independent of all those things, then we can start have, having a reality check and doing things the right way. You know, uh, uh, Walter, it, it is amazing uh, that uh, we have a lot of great Africans around the world, uh, you know, like uh, the gentleman you just mentioned, uh, who is uh, a scent expert, uh, you know, sniffing out, uh, you know, things uh, across the world and doing very well in the United States uh, is also a Nigerian. So it is uh, with so many other people in uh, pretty much uh, other sectors of, uh, you know, the national life. Now, you know, let me bring in Collins here because there's something that Walter talked about uh, earlier on the show when uh, he first uh, came on and it has to do with uh, leadership. Uh, uh, Collins, uh, Walter thinks that uh, the leadership is skewed, the leadership uh, is absent, uh, the leadership recruitment process is fraught. And uh, uh, so tell us, Collins, is, uh, you know, leadership, no doubt, is the sole factor that makes all the difference for nations. How badly has it affected Africa's progress? Um, I do believe uh, pretty sincerely, that Africa doesn't quite lack uh, leadership uh, in terms of you know the human resources, the quality of the leaders uh, that we have. I mean, it's a mixed bag, a mixed bag in in terms of um, a number of uh, highly qualified uh, individuals that are in leadership uh, position in Africa. Some of which uh, are actually um, you know products of uh, the diaspora who have uh, lived and worked in uh, places where things are done differently, if not, uh, if not better. So they have that, um, you know, advantage of, um, you know, rich uh, experience. Mm -hmm. But um, there is something in Africa, I don't know who dropped it there, but uh, there is certainly something in Africa that makes it impossible for even the best to come home and be the best that they could be and there is also another aspect of um, you know this whole saga that has to do with um, you know selfishness and thievery. Now, if you look at um, you know the budget for um, infrastructure, it's not as if uh, it isn't there. It is, and there we are not talking of very little sums of money. But the fact is that uh, you have a crop of uh, tired old men, especially. Uh, who are more concerned about their individual pockets as opposed to the, you know, uh, communal good. So they go in there and, uh, you know, funds meant for infrastructure, when, you know, activities or projects 
are actually diverted to their individual pockets. So they end up not, you know, fulfilling the tax that they were meant to, uh, to fulfill. Now, if we are able to reorientate uh, these individuals and get them to embrace, you know, uh, national interests as opposed to uh, personal interests, I think um, Africa will be making, um, you know, uh, some very significant uh, leapfrog. Now, let us look at the package uh, as, as we have it today. A recent study by Deloitte actually came up with um, um, the force that is needed to set Africa on the right track in a decade's time to be able to meet its uh, infrastructure uh, challenge. And we're talking of um, a mere uh, 93 billion uh, US uh, dollars, out of which two-thirds, uh, um, which represents uh, approximately uh, 60 billion, uh, will go into injecting new uh, infrastructure, and some 30% uh, will, uh, sorry, not 30%, 30 billion will then be used in maintaining uh, existing infrastructure, which is where we have a very, very big uh, problem because we have a very poor uh, maintenance culture uh, in Africa. Things dilapidate and they are not upgraded. The population is uh, perhaps the fastest growing in the whole world. So infrastructure uh, is not upgraded to meet the expanding uh, uh, population. Not because we do not have uh, you know, the best uh, statisticians that will make projections and tell us what our population is going to be in the next decade, in the next uh, two decades, so that uh, you know, they will uh, take all of this into um, uh, consideration in upgrading uh, infrastructure uh, you know, that are existing. But no, they would, like I said earlier, concentrate more on enriching themselves than you know, uh, getting the money into where uh, it is um, very much needed. So essentially, I believe that um, what Africa needs is a right uh, leadership, and that right leadership has got to be, um, you know, developed through uh, a better uh, political uh, situation, a better political uh, structure. Because until that happens, you are not able to, you know, elect the right people into the right position to ensure that the right thing is done for the African people and ultimately for uh, the development of the continent. Well, he's holistically, he's holistic. I rather listen to you, uh, Collins, uh, from uh, uh, the leaders or the leadership as well as uh, the people. If only you had uh, that moment with Walter earlier uh, when he also posited that, saying that we also must endeavor to look at individuals' attitude. Uh, you know, uh, Walter, let's take this before we go on the break. Uh, you, you know, in recent times, there have been impressive individual resorts from the continent. Uh, uh, we see startups building great businesses and preferring solutions to uh, many problems. Now, how can more of these be encouraged? Uh, because uh, uh, we can just count them on our fingers, but uh, we know that there are much more, you know, on the continent than we're seeing at the moment. Well, thank you for that question. Uh, the, the issue is very simple. We, I mentioned something about uh, Nigeria, Nigeria holic issues. We need to accept the fact that we have problems. Those problems start from us. We deserve the leaders we vote for. And our current leaders, they have done the best possible they can do. And their best is falling short. Now, let's go back a little bit and say, let's, let, how do we address this issue? Every single part of the country has a local government area. Let us decentralize the country. You don't have to go to Abuja to register a business. You can go down to your local government, register a business, and be functional. Let your local government area be your central point that you can conduct your business, not Abuja. Let your uh, local government be the place you can complain that the roads are not taken care of. Let your local government be the place that, you know, when it comes to electricity, you need you, you find someone that you can go down to and, and complain to. Water, police, security. Look, there is no single person in that country, in Nigeria, that doesn't know someone that has been attacked, shot at, or robbed 
in that country. Please tell me if that person is alive in Nigeria, you know, that person deserve a, a praise. That's not a single person that, like that. Now, what about here? I don't have to lock my doors. We talk about security. We talk about, you know, walking with each other at 12 midnight. There's noise all over the place about it's going to be some kind of religious, whatever. You cannot rest. How can you think? So how can we get things going? We need to start local. Everything starts from the local. You doesn't have to go down to Abuja to get things going. If I need to register a business, I should be able to register a business and be fully functional locally. I don't have to go down to CAC in Abuja to do that. I should be able to get an accountant to work with me in my local government area. Do you know in America, there's a whole lot of people that don't even leave their town for, the, for most of their life. They don't have a need to because everything they need is there. They don't have to worry about what's going on in the federal government. There are laws that the federal government says is illegal, but when it comes to the state, it's legal. Everything, everything starts from the local area. That's why things work. If there's a problem, go down to your local council, city hall, and complain over there. There's going to be a city hall meeting. You can go down there and vent whatever you need to vent. You don't have to go down to a foreign state, speak a different language, or try to blow some in a foreign language that you're not competent of, and to articulate what you want. You can speak a local language, be in your local vicinity, and tell them what you want to do. Now let's go back to in our intelligence. Uh, I'll talk about artificial intelligence because this is my space. What is artificial intelligence? I'll break it down again. Every single kid that was born anywhere in the world has a blank slate. Okay, God gave that kid a brain. That brain is supposed to collect data, analysis on data, and do analytics on data. So when you're a kid, two months old, you can see a little baby you know, looking at his or her fist and taking it and gradually uh, pointing towards his own eyes. And eventually the finger would just poke his own, his own eyes. That kid would you know, start crying. That is data. That kid is collecting data. He knows the next time he does that, it's going to hurt. The next time a kid sees fire, he goes into a fire and stick his hand in there. That is data. Now he has built a model that when I put my finger inside that fire, it's going to burn. That's intelligence. So artificial intelligence is collecting analysis, which is the past data, putting, uh, what do you call it, uh, you know, putting some understanding into that data and build a model that if I put my, fire, my finger in the fire, it will burn. Then I put analytics on it. So I walk away when I see fire. That's intelligence. Nigerians have resources to do that. The understanding is very simple. Like I said before, there's going to be about 2 million job openings in the next two years. Where are Nigerians? First, you need to learn how to do Python coding. It's simple. You don't need any books. It's free online. You can work together and learn together as a group. You don't need to go to any school. Hey, you know, I'm doing it right now with some Nigerians for free. We even enroll some Nigerians you know, on, uh, to a, a university online for six months program, intensive six months program, $7,000 each to do artificial intelligence machine language. Strangers though, we don't know because why they have that competence. There, there are much more richer people in Nigeria that can do that. So but the goal is for those people to teach other Nigerians for free, that's their mandate. And so we can have more people learning this. So the 2 million job openings that's gonna happen in two years, we'll be ready to take, you know, to be part of it. And you don't have to go anywhere. You can be in Nigeria. That's foreign money coming in. That's dollars coming in, that's euros coming in. So we don't need anyone coming in to invest, borrow money, and come out with some ridiculous interest rate that's going to take another 30 years to pay it back. That's my opinion. So we can do things right now as we are. Look, let's think so elementary. We don't have to think so. It doesn't have to be anything magnanimous. That you, know, is you, you know, you know, Walter, sorry yeah. to button, uh, sorry to button here, you know, listening to you uh, and, and Wilson, the good thing here is that uh, both of you have, you know, tried to bring this to the barest, you know, of understanding using simple languages. So uh, when we come back, I'm excited that uh, we're now talking about solution and uh, for on the cyberspace, 
uh, we really can't run away. Uh, the potential are enormous, as highlighted by both of you. But how well can we start, you know, plugging in uh, and, you know, running with it? Because keep in mind, the first thing you did say, the cyber world, there's nothing like a developing world, uh, you know, an advanced world. It is one and the same level playing field for anyone to jump on. And I'm excited that that has been so established. And every African child watching on the continent and outside the continent has some thinking to do. But when we come back, we'll speak more on this. Join us again. You know, the security frameworks of uh, African countries also need to move in line with uh, modern trends as terrorists and adversaries keep stepping up in the bid to wreak more havoc on the continent. African security networks and the military need artificial intelligence and cyber security to be above and ahead every time. And this will help in checking their enemies and also contributing massively uh, to African development. Uh, the, the continent needs, uh, you know, cybersecurity experts in uh, the military to be in better positions to repel attacks uh, as uh, they get to gather more intelligence that will put them uh, steps ahead. Uh, you know, these are some of the key indicators to development, but questions are posed about the need for our desire uh, for the desire from African leaders, education of the people on the continent, and as well using Africa's huge resources to greatness. While there are improvements in the number of African children going to primary school now, the syllabuses, as uh, you know, highlighted, of majority of these schools need to be reviewed uh, uh, to meet, you know. Uh, the relevance of uh, the growing world. Higher education is still absent, with 6% uh, of African youth going on to study in higher institutions. Uh, poor development, poor environment, untrained teachers, absence of structures, uh, these are still key problems to many African nations' advancement in education. There is also the lack of will from leaders. Now, the begging question remains of what use is Africa's abundant natural resources, with some of the biggest deposits of natural resources in the world. Gold, crude oil, and of course, limestone, uranium, diamonds. The continent has been given all it needs. In the absence of good leadership, development keeps stalling, and that's where the continent is. I'm still uh, here with uh, two uh, of my guests. Uh, um, Walter and Collins, good to know that uh, both of you are still here, is our home stretcher on uh, VSA. Uh, let me uh, uh, bring in uh, Collins here before I get to you, Walter. Quickly here, Collins, you know, listening to Walter, one of the key things uh, we're missing here uh, is education. It might not be the Western type education, uh, because talking about the young man who was arrested for breaking it into banks, he could not even express himself in English language. But he's as smart as anyone can be in in Asia, in Germany, uh, where English is not the language spoken, you know, by these people. So it brings us to education, which is still very poor on the continent. So Collins, you know, many people are not in school. How badly has this affected the continent? looking at uh, the style of education system we have uh, for people on the continent? Um, very bad. I mean, there is no fancy way of, uh, of putting it. Um, I think um, we need to go back to the uh, drawing board, uh, beginning with the curriculum. Uh, but of course, um, this all boils down to, um, you know, uh, attracting uh, leadership that is fit for purpose, leadership that is uh, selfless. Uh, because uh, like um, what I actually pointed out indeed, um, you know, um, some of the uh, human resources uh, needed uh, doesn't quite have to come uh, from, from the university. They don't have to be the biggest data scientists 
that uh, Africa needs to get uh, to get its right. But you see, there are some um, you know encouraging signs uh, that you can see. Um, take for example the uh, banking sector in Nigeria and uh, you know online banking and uh, and the rest of them. Um, they work as good as maybe even better in some uh, countries. I'm talking of um, you know um, round the clock uh, on the spot. Um, you know, banking operations, you do a transfer right away and the next, um, you know, the next second, the next minute is on the beneficiary's uh, account. Uh, in most part of uh, Europe and the United States of America, you haven't got such a sophisticated uh, practice. But it is there in Nigeria, and the reason it's succeeding is because it is in private hands. Take that to, um, you know, uh, to the public sector, it's going to fail and fail woefully. Now, that is not to say that the public sector should be um, written off uh, completely. No. I mean, you still have to have them uh, to fulfill the best um, you know, uh, uh, function that is uh, set up for them, which is be the umpire, provide the rules, and monitor implementations and all of that. So that brings me to the almighty uh, public-private uh, partnership. Now, public-private partnership can also be part of that process of re-educating, you know, uh, Africa to be able to develop, um, you know, the right skills and the right individuals that is targeted. It doesn't have to be um, university level uh, education. Some young chaps, even at, um, you know, uh, junior secondary school, what we call uh, JSS in Nigeria, um, they do have the talent, you can spot them, and then the curriculum, adapted to capture these people young and then the right investment uh, made so that in the budget uh, every year, I mean, um, education has to take a good chunk of uh, in terms of percentage of the, uh, you know, uh, global budget. And I'm talking of nothing less than 25% because that education is so very important, very critical to uh, Africa's uh, development uh, all around. You know, uh, uh, let me bring in uh, Walter here quickly. I I'm uh, thinking about artificial intelligence, uh, which uh, you touched on before uh, we went on the break. The thing here, uh, uh, Walter, you know, artificial intelligence has made a lot of difference for many countries in, in the world. Uh, as an expert in that field, do you see enough efforts uh, to get on board uh, this in Africa? Yes, I see the opportunity, but we need a little bit of boost and help. Mm. The, uh, the, you really don't need much. That is the beauty of it. People can actually set up Zoom sessions and learn for free. Mm. And you can have hundreds of people in Zoom sessions and have them in, uh, what do you call it, uh, you know, rooms and you know, breakout rooms and teach <coughs> every single day. So instead of going to church, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Get your kids the opportunity to learn. Because the, the issue is very simple. These kids are the future of that country. I'm not even going to talk about Africa. I'm just going to localize it to Nigeria. Now, do you know what's going on in Nigeria now with what they call QR code, which is a, you know, an advanced bar, and a barcode? Now, you can go down to Nigerian parties, get a blown, a blown up, uh, you know, mega size of a QR code, put it out there. And instead of using physical spraying, you can use your cell phone to capture the QR code and spray. Now that's brilliant. Now, some kid did that. That person did not win a government contract. Mm. And for you to win a government contract, you have to have a couple of millions of, you know, Naira in the bank account, show the last hundred years tax, you know, return, know somebody that knows somebody that knows a senator and uh, plan to bribe somebody another, you know, 50% of the money you're going to collect. These kids are innovative. Get out of the way. Let them do what they're supposed to do. If you cannot join them, just let them help the country grow. Now, let's go back to the QR code, part of the artificial intelligence. You can store data in the QR code. You can retrieve information from QR code. You can send information to, through the QR code. Just think for a minute. There is traffic jam all over Lagos, all right? Mm 
QR code every single vehicle out there. I'm just throwing it out there. And the uh, traffic police comes in and give tickets and scan the QR code. Now, when you go down to, re to renew your registration or the vehicle, it's gonna tell you that you have collected this many traffic tickets. That's revenue for the state. All right, it's simple. You don't need anybody to come from abroad to teach you that. These kids have shown the way. Data doesn't lie. The database will always be there if you use it. That's, that's revenue generation. You use that money to fix the roads. Between, I mean, think about, you know, the federal roads or the state roads. These roads are terrible. You have trucks parking all the way down to, uh, to collect their goods at Tinkan Island or Papa, and they cause enough traffic. And nobody's talking about that. Create a place for them to park and charge them for my, uh, some nominal amount. They will pay it. Figure out an electro electronic system so that they can go into the ports and collect the goods and come out safely. Everybody will be down with it. Now, on addressing to this kind of frenzy that, okay, we have, uh, you know, Boko Haram stuff going on. What is Boko Haram? Mm. All right. What is, okay, let's talk about, no, let, let's put that aside for a minute. Let's talk about the Fulani herdsmen. It's very simple. You don't like what the Fulani herdsmen are doing. What are they doing? They bring their cows, eat your, you know, eat your vegetation, all right, and sell the cows to you. Stop eating their cows. Go and build your own ranch. Local government. Simple. Your local government build a ranch, get the cattle in, feed them, you know, create jobs. There will be ranchers in your local community. Then they start selling the cows, right? Then someone will buy the cow and cut them up and go down to the market and sell them. Jobs are created. So if uh, the full family comes in and knows that he or she cannot sell the cows in Lagos, what is he going to do? He's going to go back and it's not coming back again. So what's all this nonsense about, oh, it's a full and this? It's your problem. You deserve the leaders you vote for. You know, uh, listening to you, uh, let me bring in Collins here. Collins, uh, you know, th there must be an agenda. There must be a way forward. And we've started looking at all of that uh, for the continent. And again, now, uh, putting this uh, on the doorstep of Nigeria, what should be the top three agenda towards development uh, for African nations? Uh, more so uh, as Nigeria seems sometimes to be leading the pack uh, of, uh, you know, other African nations. Like I alluded to, um, you know, in my uh, previous uh, intervention, um, I tend to see some, um, you know, uh, light at the end of a tunnel in the area of uh, public-private pri um, uh, partnership, the so-called uh, PPPs. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe that um, uh, the so much talked about uh, banking reforms in Nigeria, which to a large extent uh, was, um, you know, uh, a success. Uh, however, looking at um, infrastructure uh, development, I believe that um, the time has now come for the Central Bank of Nigeria, going uh, specifically to Nigeria as, um, you know, uh, a supposedly uh, leading uh, African uh, economy, uh, they've got to now begin to find ways and means of compelling banks to, um, you know, uh, be able to give out uh, tenor loans that will be able to meet, you know, uh, specific, well thought through uh, business plan that, uh, you know, help to uh, develop uh, infrastructure. Now, in the end, I believe that uh, there, there is a very strong, very critical, uh, you know, economic sense uh, to make out of that. But banks appear to be constructed in Nigeria at the moment more as a trading entity than one that, uh, you know, finances uh, long-term infrastructure uh, projects. I think in that uh, aspect, government has got to uh, go back to the drawing board and, uh, you know, churn out... Um, you know, new rules uh, to be able to uh, govern that as opposed to, uh, you know, the constant uh, harassment that uh, the diaspora have uh, now began to uh, to receive uh, out of uh, the remittances uh, that, uh, that is sent to the country. Now, they should take their, you know, uh, their focus off uh, such. If they want to uh, target, um, you know, diaspora remittances, they should target it more in terms of uh, converting it to some form of uh, investment and 
encouraging it because we are looking at uh, well over 27 billion US dollars that is um, you know remitted on annual basis from the diaspora whereas the continent as a whole needs 93 billion to be able to get its infrastructure right in a period of uh, 10 years. Now, extrapolate that and see how much the Nigerian government has been an uh, unpurposed goal in terms of targeting the potentials that they have, you know, talking about diaspora investment, uh, you know, um, as, a, as a key example. Now, I was at a meeting recently, um, you know, with a state uh, government and uh, some uh, potential, um, uh, you know, foreign investors. Now, one of the um, investors continued, you know, repeatedly talked about the fact that, well, we are actually coming in to help you. He said it not once, not twice, several times. It was like every sentence he made, you know, and he made it clear. And of course, uh, the, the point is actually trying to strengthen his uh, negotiation, uh, you know, uh, powers. But ultimately, uh, the representative of, um, you know, the state government, was very quick to let him know that uh, there is nothing like um, you know coming to help us. Yes, you are bringing your investment here, but the essence of investment is to make profit. So you are coming here uh, to collaborate with us for mutual benefit. So it's important to get that right. Now that brings me to the point that um, you know Walter made uh, earlier in regards to um, Nigeria or Africa not needing uh, any help from anywhere. Now, I beg to disagree uh, slightly because um, uh, when foreign investors come in, if the ground is, uh, is right for them to, to come in because they are scared of uh, because of a lack of uh, infrastructure, you know, um, not to talk of uh, the political risks involved in investment in, uh, in Africa. Once all of those, uh, you know, are you know, put on the track, um, yes, all investments are welcome. All uh, facilitations and collaborations are needed because injection of uh, fresh capital into the economy will, of course, uh, facilitate the um, you know infrastructure development that is uh, needed to leapfrog the development of uh, of the continent. Let me let me quickly bring in Walter here to react to that uh, so that we can close the show. Walter, you had Collins. He disagrees with you to some extent. Uh, the continent needs help. Well, thank you very much, Collins. I will respectfully uh, agree to disagree. Uh, we used <laughs> to have Volkswagen and Pujo in Nigeria. We used to have Leland. We have to have. We used to have agricultural tractors being made in Nigeria. We had Vono. We had. Uh, extra, we had Dunlop, many more that used to be made in Nigeria. And we used to sell them to other West African countries. We don't need anybody to come to Nigeria. We can do it with ourselves. Now, what I've been saying before was essentially talking about data. Everything that I've been talking about is when you start collecting data, you start understanding better how to intelligently move forward. If you don't have data collection, you can't move forward. You need data scientists. You talk about loan. I agree with you, but don't give loan to anybody that's going to go and get a second wife or, you know, the first Mercedes. Go through the process <laughs> of going through, you know, a business acumen, one month orientation. Teach them something. When they pass, then give them the loan. All right. They don't have to know somebody to get the loan. That is the process. Data about how many people went through the program, passed a class and successful after six months, one year, that didn't you know, marry the second and third wife, didn't get you know, the second and third car, or start building homes and taking money from the business. Get the data, see who's an outlier in there. Understand what's going on. Then expand the process from one state to other states and all over the country. Start small, learn. It's all about data. It's all about artificial intelligence. We have it. And the learning about it, it, you know, it can be free. We should make it free. The government can make it free. Zoom session, Google Meet, there are people that can teach it. You know, one person can teach hundreds of people at the same time yeah. over the course of a few months. We can do this. Data analysis is key. Get data scientists. Let's start documenting things. Well, I think good a place for us to wrap up. Uh, no one has taken a second, a third, or a fourth wife today. But, <laughs> but a fine place for us to wrap up. And the good thing again here, Walter, keep in mind, we just uh, 
uh, we'll be reaching out to you because uh, New Centre is having uh, a robust week, uh, a package uh, for children, you know, uh, on their day when it comes uh, in April, in May. And uh, we have uh, to have that Zoom moment live on television uh, with you, uh, having a conversation with some of them. Uh, problems have been dissected. Uh, solutions have been proffered. And uh, Africa arguably the most blessed continent uh, listen to both of you honestly uh, in the world needs to step up development must be the watchword for the continent to rise up to its potential it is not negotiable many thanks uh, for joining uh, me today uh, walter and collins i hope to see you both again and of course uh, for you for watching my viewer thank you for being such nice company we'll return again tomorrow bye-bye